But first, like anything else, you have to introduce it to the public, like what you're doing through, through all the media that we can. We feel that we'd like to present a major motion picture. Peter Joseph did a tremendous job to introduce this to the whole world. And we, we get emails, we get hundreds and hundreds of emails a day and people who want to help. Let me, what I want to do is I want to go on these pictures. This is, um, let's get a picture too, can we? This is a, a picture of some of your architectural ideas for, uh, for a new world. There we go, it's on that screen there. Oh, it's gone again. Yep, there it is. So these are, Jack, these are some of your ideas, are they? Yes. And you've designed these buildings. Yes. I mean, they're stunning buildings. I would be very happy to live in either one of those two, for instance. Well, actually, they're all transitional. There's no final architecture or final frontiers or final city. Even the best city I design will be a straitjacket to the kids of the future. They'll design their own cities. And if you make a statue of me, that holds back the future. So yeah, there's no more self-ego involved. Most architects design tall buildings and feel proud of it. They should design buildings for living, comfort, safety, earthquake-proof, fireproof, termite-proof, and architects don't do that. They're all little personalities that seek recognition. You don't fight for recognition. You fight for elimination of the problems. When people are saner, they will not want a Nobel Prize. Because if you work on cancer 10 years, and I read your book and find out what didn't work, and I come up two years later, I win the Nobel Prize. I feel that everybody working on cancer works just as hard as you do. So I don't see there should be Nobel Prizes. They should work because they believe in making life better for people. Well, I've, got to, I've got to come back to this same That's question. Right. Now, how, do you get, how do you get the world to change? You know, assuming that your ideas are acceptable to the majority, and I'm not sure that they are. We'll get to that. Yeah. But assuming that they are acceptable to the majority and everyone finds them attractive and you were able to disseminate these ideas all around the world and, and everybody bought into them, the you know question. what I mean? How do you get to that point? How do you get to the point where everybody the buys into The question is how do you get from here to there? Yeah, and how do you first, stop the people who are really in power? I understand. From now, first, stringing on to what they've got. First thing that has to happen, they have to have an economic problem. That's what happened during the Depression. That's when socialism, communism, fascism all emerged. So we've got that now, Jack. We've time. got an economic We're in that process now. But I don't see We're, anybody going, oh, let's get rid of money. Wait a while. We're nearing the turning point. See, now all over the world societies are breaking down and politicians don't know what to do. They gave the money, I'm talking about America because that's where it came from, they gave the money to the people that created the problem in the first place. Then they bail out the automobile factories when they were going broke, they didn't even want to close the plant and they bailed them out. The automobile companies never submitted a blueprint with a car better than Toyota, faster than Toyota, better built at a lower price. If they don't submit that and the public doesn't have purchasing power due to losing their jobs, who the hell's going to buy these new cars? Well, they're, they're, they're giving cash out. for clunkers, as they call them in America, and we've got a scrappage scheme in the UK as well. So yes, all over the world, all governments are corrupt. Did you get that message? All of them, <laughs> all of them are corrupt. Okay. Communism, socialism, all of them, fascism. So I felt, is there another way to operate the government? And I sat down, I began to design the society Jack, of the future. I've got to cut in there because we're going to go for a break now. If you'd like to text in your questions or comments for Jacques Fresco and Roxanne Meadows, why not do so now to 87778 with the word edge and then your text. We'll see you back here very soon. Welcome back to On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guests, Jacques Fresco and Roxanne Meadows. Um, Jacques, um, just before the break, we were talking about how we can achieve this utopia, if you like. But what I thought we'd do now is just show a bit of a little film that you've made, yes. if we can. So if we can go to that film, and I'll give people an idea. Oh. 
Uh, this is only transitional pictures of what the future could be. Not what it will be, I don't know. We may kill each other because I'm very much against the space program. If any one nation gets out there long enough, there's going to be nuclear weapons going around. We're not wise enough yet, nor are we civilized. As long as there's prisons, police, armies, navies, we are not civilized. When the world joins together and agrees to use the Earth intelligently, I'm talking about the whole world, that'll be the beginning of the civilized age. There's no such thing as utopia. Every city will continue to grow, change, just as your laptop undergoes change. There's no final frontiers. That's bull. That's written by Hollywood hacks. Movies on the future where they burn each other with laser weapons and robots choke the designer. That's Hollywood hacks. Has nothing to do with the future. Politicians have no way of dealing. That's the city of the future, one city. The universities design buildings and people live in them, complain and bitch about the lack of how fast the elevators move, my grandmother can't get out of them, and we change them till they work very well. And at that time, we move the buildings out there, the concert halls and all. After put to test, the city has everything in the middle, medical care, dental care, and the shopping where goods are available to everyone without a price tag. There's no money anymore. The reason there's no money is because drug companies pay off radio stations, television stations to pitch their drugs. The drug company doesn't tell you if you drink carrot juice, that'll lower your blood pressure. There's no money in that. So they make pills. So I'm saying that all of the industries are price system oriented, money oriented. And if that's their orientation, I don't trust them. When a doctor says your kidney has to come out, we don't know whether he's trying to pay off a new boat or whether your kidney has to come out. So I don't trust the monetary system. So here we show buildings being assembled automatically by machine. You don't need laborers anymore. You don't need young girls standing behind counters. We can design machines to move 20-story buildings, float them out to the site, and with one pound of force, we can move a building a ton of weight. So the round city of the future will put every district the same distance from that center building. And the center building has everything that people need. Well, I mean, that's, uh, that looks absolutely incredible, and I'm, I'm sure it would be great. I think there probably isn't a person on the planet who wouldn't think that looks great. But I've got to get back to that question, sure. which we were interrupted absolutely. by the break. And that is, how does it happen? Okay. How does I'm going to try to answer that. If I fail, you have to let me know. So you didn't well, I think that. people, you know, a lot of people are texting in already. A okay. lot of, I, I was, uh, let me just read out a couple here. Um, this gentleman should be president of the world, really. Kind regards, Morris Wilmot. You are more than an inspiration. You are a motivation. Thank you for your light in a dull world. Extreme emotion. Uh, that man should be in power. That's Aidan Doherty in Straban in Northern Ireland. Um, but then Bob in Whitehead says, how does it work without money? Who goes to work? What do you do? Okay, you ask me that now? Yeah. Okay. The way it happens is the system has to fall. People have to lose confidence in their elected leaders. I have no control. At that time, when they try to solve problems and it doesn't work, then the public will say, be looking for new ideas. They don't give a damn right now. As long as they're working, paying off their home and car, that's all they're concerned with. Only if they lose their jobs and their homes do they begin to look around for new ideas. So what we want to do is make a motion picture called And the World Will Be One. And that motion picture is about a family in the future, how they live, their lifestyle, and children six and seven years old that are different than our children. No Mickey Mouse clubs or Cinderella or garbage that they get in school today. Children can learn math, they can learn anything at all. And the children are bright and they ask their parents, how did we get to a world without war, without crime? I want to know in detail. So father says, didn't you get that in school? He says, only a little bit. And the kids say, we want to know exactly how we got from this old world of chiselers, bankers, fraudulent uh, in social institutions, propaganda. How do you get from the old world to the new one? 
And the father starts, says, that's a long thing. Didn't you get that in school? They said, not enough. I want detail. I want to know. So he sits both children down, and he starts talking, and the camera goes back to the present day, where there's unemployment, protest signs, don't cut down the forest. As long as people buy lumber, they're going to keep cutting down the forest. The stupidity of walking around with protest signs doesn't work. The, you see, the liberal points out of the shortcomings of our country, but does not offer an alternative. Communism, socialism, offers no working alternative. But isn't your future a bit like a communist world, from each according to his uh, ability to each I according to his buy needs? That. No, That's there's money. They, do, they use money in communism and socialism. Okay, well, they how does have it, elite. How does it work? They have stratification.